Welcome to our latest project. This is a 14 garage site that we purchased from auction and we've now managed to get planning for four terraced houses. Let me show you the site. So we purchased this site back in December 2022 from auction and when we purchased it, it had lapsed planning for three dwellings and that was a pair of semi-detached houses and a small 50 square metre bungalow. Um, so what we did once we purchased the property was we drew up plans to replicate the previously consented scheme of three dwellings and we chose to submit the exact same uh, plans up to date with uh, current building regs and the reason for doing that was it was the path of least resistance to re-establish what had previously been consented uh, with the local authority. Now, once that was done and the local authority, local planning department gave us permission for those three dwellings, we then went in for a second planning application where we, we went in for four terraced houses and removed the bungalow. Now, I'll explain a little bit about why we decided to go down that road, but essentially it was to increase the GDV of the site and to reduce the build cost and to not have to build the small bungalow, which would have been more difficult to sell. So on the first planning application that was consented, we had permission for a bungalow here on this slope behind me, and it was circa 50 square metres, and it would have been valuable, but it was particularly tricky to, to build. And the reason that was is we had this sloped elevation to deal with, which would have created the need for a stepped foundation foundation or perhaps a raft foundation and to add to the complication behind me I don't know if you can see there's a tree up there on the boundary and so potentially there were going to be roots underneath the foundations and so what we decided to do was to scrap the bungalow over there and increase uh, the number of dwellings up behind me if I show you over here you'll see there are seven garages here up against the bank and there was consent for a pair of semi-detached houses so what we'll be doing is knocking down those garages, demolishing them, and instead building a row of four terraced houses, circa 120 square metres each, which will be much more saleable and much easier to build in a row and a block of four, rather than having uh, some dwellings over here and another separate dwelling over down on that slope. So now that planning has been granted, we're moving on to the next stage of this development, which is discharging the various planning uh, conditions that have been put on the site which include um, an acoustic report that we've need, needed to have done because we have an electric substation at the far end of the site, um, soft landscaping drawings, drainage drawings, land contamination risk assessment, uh, a long list about 17 conditions some of which are pre-commencement conditions others which are not such as electric charging point provision before the occupation of the dwellings and today what we've done is it's our first day on site today actually and we're doing testing so we're testing the soil and we've had a bore soil test done shortly you'll see here um, footage of a rig been set up to test the soil and it's essentially going down into the ground 
Um, around 7.8 metres was the final depth that we managed to reach and we've taken out various samples of soil at different depths which will be sent off to a lab to determine um, what type of soil we have which will then determine what type of foundations and what, what our structural engineer will need to determine how we can build the foundations of the property. So as well as having the soil test done today, we're also uh, doing a percolation test. Now the purpose of a percolation test on a development site is to determine essentially if you can use a soak away or not. Um, we, we've noticed that the soil here is full of clay and therefore we're not very confident that the water will drain away quick enough in our percolation test, which you can see from behind me here, we have a lot of water in this large hole dug down to about 1.5 metres in the ground. And we're currently monitoring how quickly the water is draining away. And it doesn't seem to be draining away, away very quickly, which will essentially mean we probably won't be able to have a soak away on site and we'll need to have another drainage strategy. So um, the bore test is done. We'll get the results back in about two weeks. We're assuming after the conversation with the engineer who did the bore test that we'll hopefully get away with doing a traditional trench foundation about 1.2 metres into the ground um, and then potentially to have a block and beam type slab that we can build off of. Um, once we get those results back, we'll be able to move forward with our structural engineer's drawings. Percolation test will be done over the next couple of days. We'll keep testing. We've got two holes on the site that we're doing to test the uh, drainage for the soak away. And the other thing that we've done today as well is something called a WAC test, which is essentially a waste acceptance criteria test. Now, what we've, the reason we've done that is just to determine the levels of any contamination in the soil so that when we're removing soil from the site, um, we're sure that it will go to the right landfill site that will accept that uh, type of soil based on any contamination that's found um, in, in the soil itself. So that's a little uh, summary of what we're getting on with at the moment. The next video that I'll do will be going into more detail about our construction method and I'll be talking about why I'm potentially going to be using a timber frame construction rather than your traditional block and brick with a cavity in between and how that will be speeding up the process of me building these four dwellings. And I'll also be talking to you a little bit about how long this process will take for me to build these four houses. We'll go into a bit more detail about the numbers as well. So we're coming to the end of today and we spent the last five hours or so monitoring the water in our um, percolation test that we've been doing. And we can see that the water is not draining away as quick as it should be which ultimately, ultimately means a soak away is not going to be viable for this site. But we've done the test and we've ticked the box and it's one of those things that you need to do when you're doing small scale property development. So now our plan is to go away and focus on the next month trying to get all the planning conditions discharged. Um, we're coming up to uh, Christmas season where we know the planning officers normally go on holiday and don't respond to emails. So we'll be battling with that, hoping to try and make a start on this project in the early new year. The next video that I will do will be commenting on the construction method, we'll be looking at our foundations, we'll be looking at our structural engineers drawings and we'll take a deep dive into the starting process or the build phase. This project should take circa 9 to 12 months to build the dwellings and sort out the landscaping. Um, we are bringing new electric supply, we're doing new drainage supply, uh, new water, gas etc. Um, so we'll take about nine to 12 months to do the build. We've allowed another six months to do the sales of the, of the four properties which we'll be putting to the market. And we've also given ourselves a two month kind of a mobilization period at the beginning to get all the planning conditions discharged. So in total, uh, 18 to 20 month project. Hopefully we'll be finished well before then, but we've allowed plenty of time. So if you liked today's video, hit the like button, um, comment if you've got any questions or if you want to see similar content, um, subscribe to the channel um, and I'll see you at the next one. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. How do you feel? <laughs> Cold. It's freezing today. You know when you go on these property development courses, they charge you like 20 grand to teach you how to build houses? They don't teach you how to use one of these, look. This is called a shovel. They don't teach you how to use that on the course. You can't get the staff, mate. You just can't get the staff. Huh?